As I have trained with the Ukrainian military, I've been involved in a peacekeeping exercise. I've come to one of their initial conferences on democracy. I have had occasion to work with them and find the people to be wonderful. It has been heartbreaking to see this um, invasion attack, this war happening, and I wanted to be able to help in some capacity. And I have connected with the August Mission, who has a wonderful humanitarian assistance uh, mission over here. It's headquartered in Warsaw, Poland, and we come on two week volunteer um, timeframes and they've been here for two months helping out. Give me an idea of how, how Poland has been able to absorb, I mean, we're, we're, up, we're looking at close to 4 million refugees not all of them have been to poland vast majority what's the infrastructure been like as far as poland be able to accept and pull in all these people coming in honestly since the beginning um, it was just a big move of people with a good hearts uh, and we just pretty much took majority of uh, all refugees to homes who were total strangers uh, there was no government support on the beginning uh, before everything started to be organized, uh, just people help to avoid the situation that will, uh, that will end up with those all refugees camps and, and uh, humanitarian problem. So basically we have a lot of people in our homes right now. Uh, in my home, we end up with having uh, six people on 100 square meters. So it was pretty much uh, difficult with my wife and my one, and eight, uh, one year old daughter. Uh, so we help them just to find the places to live and work. And Mike, you do speak to a really good point. There's about 4 million uh, refugees or internally displaced people. And Poland, um, different, many different countries are helping take them in, but Poland has the most. Yeah, I, you know, we're, we're hearing a lot, you know, the governments, the NATO governments, the United States has, has pledged a, a great deal of support. We're hearing a lot about the military support that's being thrown in there. Uh, as far as the humanitarian effort from, from what you two have seen, are you beginning to see governmental support or is it still just being, you know, the heavy lifting and support is being done by just normal citizens in Poland? I, I can probably just speak just to the August mission part of it because I know that the um, the, the mission is to help with the internally displaced people and refugees and we are uh, in this team going in country. I was in last week, we have our team in this week and we're trying to assess the needs um, so from, from that point of view, I know that the, we work with the commercial affairs office that's associated with the U S embassy. And, um, there are companies that are donating for those people who are helping here from Uber to holiday in to real estate, uh, ventures, just everyone is coming into them to the mix, private companies. Uh, to try to help in this effort. Describe to me some of the basic needs. I mean, what what are you know? Obviously, these people are living, you know, left their left their homes with you know nothing but a backpack or a, or a suitcase. What are the basic needs? Uh, shelter, home, uh, good word, some help. Uh, basically, it's a financial help and um, help with food, finding the accommodation. Because you need to understand that a majority of those people left everything behind. They shows up here with their local currency that is pretty much worth nothing in Europe right now. So there is no possible to change it to any of our local currencies in Europe. Uh, if they can do exchange, the rate is like 15 times lower than it was before the war started. So sometimes they, they cannot understand that uh, they cannot work, they cannot do anything right now, they're without a single dollar in their pockets. I was going to say, you know, some of these refugees, many of them were, were professionals. I mean, they had, you know, they had, you know, probably good jobs back in Ukraine. And all of a sudden, you know, the next day they wake up and, you know, I don't say the economy has gone to shambles, but it's it's night and day compared to, you know, to, to what they were used to. Yeah, um, their life has changed overnight. We have some people who are still in country who are offering to be uh, to do legal work for us. There are several um, refugees who've come who've signed up on a list willing to translate and 
um, give help in that way. And we are also going in country into Ukraine to try to help assess the needs there. And the government of Ukraine has posted that they really are looking for food, clothing, shoes. Um, they need medicine. They need hygiene. They need um, just very many things that we help bring in. So we, we package a lot of things and we also we bring food and supplies in and we try to bring some people out. I always think monetary donations are probably the best because you can turn that into whatever you want to. But I, I guess speak to about the, the amount of resources that you have. You know, if, if you do need water, if you do need food, you do need medicines, where does all that come? Does that come from Europe or does it come from other parts of the uh, other, other world? I mean, how is all that, you know, this is a logistics type issue, Lieutenant Colonel, that you can speak to. I mean, where do you bring all this material in to get into Poland and then get into you know, the hands of the refugees who need it? Yeah, that's a really good question because a lot of it has been sourced in Europe. I mean, there are several um, tracks of ways of helping. There are people who can volunteer their time. There are supplies that can be sent and sourced from Europe and or the States elsewhere, anywhere. Um, and there's also monetary um, assistance. Now, in terms of the specific logistics, it's a pretty hefty price to send things from the States, but Norbert has been working with a company to try to get a discount on that. And I think he's got that almost solidified now. What, what is it that the United States can contribute beyond you know, the you know, monetary contributions? It might be an IFAX, it might be uh, tunicates, uh, all kind of... Um blood stopping uh, powder. powder there's a blood stopping yeah. powder and i'll just clar clarify what mm -hmm. ifac is so individual first aid kits I, I guess give me an idea some some tips we can give to viewers if they want to make a monetary contribution what to look out for because I, you know there's a lot of good out there but i'm also aware there's going to be a lot of scams and a lot of this money may not end up in the hands of, of their intended give me an idea if you can of of what people need to look out for and, and to know that you know if they make a contribution, they know that their money's getting into the into the right hands. What's the accountability, I guess, if you will? I know if they go look at augustmission.org, they can read about it and see if it's if they feel that's aligned with um, what they would like to do. But we've been working here, we've been successfully operating, getting stuff into country, and as um, Norbert's describing, we have those stories coming out on the website. We have um, the Commercial Affairs Office that has us listed as a legitimate humanitarian um, aid agency. Anything else uh, you, you would like to add? Like, if we can find something good in these hard times, uh, what I think, that our free world will, will be more united and is right now than ever in the human history. And I think, that if we'll keep, keep doing the good work we are doing all together as a united free people of the world, that will end up shortly and we'll go out with the situation as the winners, actually.